Good morning. My name is Jill and I have the absolute privilege of working as part-time administrator at the Beacon Baptist Church in Kilmington. When I first saw our Pastor Darrell's appeal for people to contribute to these Lent sessions, I was immediately drawn to the theme of the series, Getting Ready, with Lent being the 40 days of preparation for the celebration of Easter and thinking about how Jesus spent 40 days in the desert preparing for what he knew was to come his death and resurrection. Most of us would spend time getting ready for everyday events in our lives. We get up in the mornings and get ready for what the day may bring, either at work or in our home life. And when the day is over, we get ready for bed. If we were going for an interview, we'd spend time getting ready and preparing to make an impression. Or if we were off to a party or wedding, remember those? we'd spend time getting ready and wanting to look presentable. Chris and I are getting ready to become grandparents in April, with my knitting needles clicking away most days and watching the sale of baby clothes and baby products soar at our local supermarket every time I go shopping. The expectant parents are busy getting ready for the new arrival by decorating bedrooms and attending virtual antenatal classes. As the last year or so has proved, there are some things that take us by surprise and we haven't been able to spend time getting ready or being prepared. Our recent sermon series on the unexpected highlighted how events and circumstances can take us by surprise and we're not ready or prepared for them. All this has reminded me about the story Jesus told of the ten bridesmaids in Matthew 25 verses 1 to 13, which I'd like to read. The kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of the ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. But only five of them were wise enough to fill their lamps with oil, while the other five were foolish and forgot. When the bridegroom was delayed, they lay down to rest until midnight. When they were woken by the shout, the bridegroom is coming, come out and welcome him. All the girls jumped up and trimmed their lamps. Then the five who hadn't any oil begged the others to share, them, share with them, for their lamps were going out. But the others replied, We haven't enough. Go to the shops and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was locked. Later the other five returned. They stood outside, calling, Sir, open the door for us. But he called back, Go away, it's too late. So stay awake and be prepared, for you do not know the date or moment of my return. There are many Bible verses that remind us to be ready for when our Lord returns, and he will, but we don't know when. Matthew 24 verse 44 reads, So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. One way of being ready is to have accepted and believe in the salvation he brings, the forgiveness and love he so freely offers because he died and rose again for us. But we can also spend time getting ready for the day-to-day -day opportunities that may come along when we meet with someone who is feeling sad or is seeking some hope in their lives, especially during these difficult times. Even when there is joy and excitement around, like there will be for Chris and me in April, we can get ready to share the joy that we have in the Lord. 1 Peter 3 verse 15 says, But in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, ready at any time to give a defence to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Prayer and reading God's word is a great way to get ready for anything, even the unexpected. So let's consider those things as we get ready during this Lent period to celebrate the death and resurrection of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that at his first coming, Jesus came and died, so that we might have forgiveness and eternal life by receiving him. As we prepare for his second coming in power and glory, enable us to become the people you want us to be. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, so that we might become more holy, more godly, more at peace with you, as we live for you in your world. Fill us with your love, so that we might be motivated and empowered by your Spirit to live the life 
to talk the talk and to walk the walk you want us to. Enable us by your Spirit to help others come to repentance and faith in you, so that they too might be ready for his coming in glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.